Section thirty one of Tales of Old Japan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Stephanie Lee. Tales of Old Japan by Lord Reedsdale. Section thirty one The Vampire Cat of Nabashima. There is a tradition in the Nabeshima family that many years ago the prince of Heitzen was bewitched and cursed by a cat that had been kept by one of his retainers. This prince had in his house a lady of rare beauty, called Otoyo. Amongst all his ladies she was a favorite, and there was none who could rival her charms and accomplishments. One day the prince went out into the garden with Otoyo, and remained enjoying the fragrance of the flowers until sunset, when they returned to the palace never noticing that they were being followed by a large cat. Having parted with her lord, Otoyo retired to her own room and went to bed. At midnight she awoke with a start, and became aware of a huge cat that crouched watching her, and when she cried out the beast sprang on her, and, fixing its cruel teeth in her delicate throat, throttled her to death. What a piteous end for so fair a dame, the darling of her prince's heart, to die suddenly, bitten to death by a cat. Then the cat, having scratched out a grave under the veranda, buried the corpse of Otoyo, and assuming her form began to bewitch the prince. But my lord the prince knew nothing of all this, and little thought that the beautiful creature who caressed and followed him was an impish and foul beast that had slain his mistress and assumed her shape in order to drain out his life's blood. Day by day, as time went on, the prince's strength dwindled away. The color of his face was changed and became pale and livid and he was as a man suffering from a deadly sickness. Seeing this, his counsellors and his wife became greatly alarmed, so they summoned the physicians, who prescribed various remedies for him. But the more medicine he took, the more serious did his illness appear, and no treatment was of any avail. But most of all did he suffer in the night-time, when his sleep would be troubled and disturbed by hideous dreams. In consequence of this, his counsellors nightly appointed a hundred of his retainers to sit up and watch over him. But, Strange to say, towards ten o'clock on the very first night that the watch was set, the guard were seized with a sudden and unaccountable drowsiness, which they could not resist, until one by one every man had fallen asleep. Then the false Otoyo came in and harassed the prince until morning. The following night the same thing occurred, and the prince was subjected to the imp's tyranny, while his guard slept helplessly around him. Night after night this was repeated, until at last three of the prince's counsellors determined themselves to sit up on guard and see whether they could overcome this mysterious drowsiness. But they fared no better than the others, and by ten o'clock were fast asleep. The next day the three counsellors held a solemn conclave, and their chief, one Isahaya Butsen, said, This is a marvellous thing, that a guard of a hundred men should thus be overcome by sleep. Of a surety, the spell that is upon my lord and upon his guard must be the work of witchcraft. Now, as all our efforts are of no avail, let us seek out Ruoten, the chief priest of the temple called Miyo-in, and beseech him to put up prayers for the recovery of my lord. And the other counsellors approving what Isahaya Butsen had said, they went to the priest Ruoten, and engaged him to recite litanies that the prince might be restored to health. So it came to pass that Ruiten, the chief priest of Miyo-in, offered up prayers nightly for the prince. One night, at the ninth hour, midnight, when he had finished his religious exercises and was preparing to lie down to sleep, he fancied that he heard a noise outside in the garden, as if someone were washing himself at the well. Deeming this passing strange, he looked down from the window, and there in the moonlight he saw a handsome young soldier, some twenty-four years of age, washing himself, who, when he had finished cleaning himself and had put on his clothes, stood before the figure of Buddha and prayed fervently for the recovery of my lord the prince. Ruiten looked on with admiration, and the young man, when he had made an end of his prayer, was going away, but the priest stopped him, calling out to him, "'Sir, I pray you to tarry a little. I have something to say to you.' "'At your reverence's service. What may you please to want? Pray be so good as to step up here and have a little talk. By your reverence's leave.' And with this he went upstairs." Then Ruiten said, Sir, I cannot conceal my admiration that you, being so young a man, should have so loyal a spirit. I am Ruiten, the chief priest of this temple, who am engaged in praying for the recovery of my lord. Pray, what is your name? My name, sir, is Ito Soda, and I am serving in the infantry of Nabashima. Since my lord has been sick, my one desire has been to assist in nursing him, 
but being only a simple soldier i am not of sufficient rank to come into his presence so i have no resource but to pray to the gods of the country and to buddha that my lord may regain his health when ruiten heard this he shed tears in admiration of the fidelity of ito soda and said your purpose is indeed a good one but what a strange sickness this is that my lord is afflicted with every night he suffers from horrible dreams and the retainers who sit up with him are all seized with a mysterious sleep so that no one can keep awake it is very wonderful yes replied soda after a moment's reflection this certainly must be witchcraft if i could but obtain leave to sit up one night with the prince i would fain see whether i could not resist this drowsiness and detect the goblin at last the priest said i am in relations of friendship with isahaya butzen the chief counsellor of the prince i will speak to him of you and of your loyalty and will intercede with him that you may attain your wish indeed sir i am most thankful i am not prompted by any vain thought of self-advancement should i succeed all i wish for is the recovery of my lord i commend myself to your kind favour well then to-morrow night i will take you with me to the counsellor's house thank you sir and farewell and so they parted on the following evening ito soda returned to the temple mio in and having found rui ten accompanied him to the house of isahaya butzen then the priest leaving soda outside went in to converse with the counsellor and inquire after the prince's health and pray sir how is my lord is he in any better condition since i have been offering up prayers for him indeed no his illness is very severe we are certain that he must be the victim of some foul sorcery but as there are no means of keeping a guard awake after ten o'clock we cannot catch a sight of the goblin so we are in the greatest trouble i feel deeply for you it must be most distressing however i have something to tell you i think that i have found a man who will detect the goblin and i have brought him with me indeed who is the man well he is one of my lord's foot soldiers named ito soda a faithful fellow and i trust that you will grant his request to be permitted to sit up with my lord certainly it is wonderful to find so much loyalty and zeal in a common soldier replied isahaya butzen after a moment's reflection still it is impossible to allow a man of such low rank to perform the office of watching over my lord it is true that he is but a common soldier urged the priest but why not raise his rank in consideration of his fidelity and then let him mount guard it would be time enough to promote him after my lord's recovery but come let me see this ito soda that i may know what manner of man he is if he pleases me i will consult with the other counsellors and perhaps we may grant his request i will bring him in forthwith replied ruten who thereupon went out to fetch the young man when he returned the priest presented ito soda to the counsellor who looked at him attentively and being pleased with his comely and gentle appearance said so i hear that you are anxious to be permitted to mount guard in my lord's room at night well i must consult with the other counsellors and we will see what can be done for you when the young soldier heard this he was greatly elated and took his leave after warmly thanking buiten who had helped him to gain his object the next day the counsellors held a meeting and sent for ito soda and told him that he might keep watch with the other retainers that very night so he went his way in high spirits and at nightfall he made all his preparations took his place among the hundred gentlemen who were on duty in the prince's bedroom now the prince slept in the centre of the room and the hundred guards around him sat keeping themselves awake with entertaining conversation and pleasant conceits but as ten o'clock approached they began to doze off as they sat and in spite of all their endeavours to keep one another awake by degrees they all fell asleep ito soda all this while felt an irresistible desire to sleep creeping over him and though he tried by all sorts of ways to rouse himself he saw that there was no help for it but by resorting to an extreme measure for which he had already made his preparations drawing out a piece of oil paper which he had brought with him and spreading it over the mats he sat down upon it then he took the small knife which he carried in the sheath of his dirk and stuck it into his own thigh for a while the pain of the wound kept him awake but as the slumber by which he was assailed was a work of sorcery little by little he became drowsy again then he twisted the knife round and round in his thigh so that the pain became very violent he was proof against the feeling of sleepiness and kept a faithful watch now the oil paper which he had spread under his legs was in order to prevent the blood which might spurt from his wound from defiling the mats so ito soda remained awake but the rest of the guard slept 
and as he watched suddenly the sliding doors of the prince's room were drawn open and he saw a figure coming in stealthily and as it drew nearer the form was that of a marvellously beautiful woman some twenty-three years of age cautiously she looked around her and when she saw that all the guard were asleep she smiled an ominous smile and was going up to the prince's bedside when she perceived that in one corner of the room there was a man yet awake this seemed to startle her but she went up to soda and said i am not used to seeing you here who are you my name is ito soda and this is the first night that i have been on guard a troublesome office truly why here are all the rest of the guard asleep how is it that you alone are awake you are a trusty watchman there is nothing to boast about i must sleep myself fast and sound what is that wound on your knee it is all red with blood oh i felt very sleepy so i stuck my knife into my thigh and the pain of it has kept me awake what wondrous loyalty said the lady is it not the duty of a retainer to lay down his life for his master is such a scratch as this worth thinking about then the lady went up to the sleeping prince and said how fares it with my lord to-night but the prince worn out with sickness made no reply but soda was watching her eagerly and guessed that it was otoyo and made up his mind that if she attempted to harass the prince he would kill her on the spot the goblin however which in the form of otoyo had been tormenting the prince every night and had come again that night for no other purpose was defeated by the watchfulness of ito soda for whenever she drew near to the sick man thinking to put her spells upon him she would turn and look behind her and there she saw ito soda glaring at her so she had no help for it but to go away again and leave the prince undisturbed at last the day broke and the other officers when they awoke and opened their eyes saw that ito soda had kept awake by stabbing himself in the thigh and they were greatly ashamed and went home crestfallen that morning ito soda went to the house of isahaya butsen and told him all that had occurred the previous night the counsellors were all loud in their praises of ito soda's behaviour and ordered him to keep watch again that night at the same hour the false otoyo came and looked all round the room and all the guard were asleep excepting ito soda who was wide awake and so being again frustrated she returned to her own apartments now as since soda had been on guard the prince had passed quiet nights his sickness began to get better and there was great joy in the palace and soda was promoted and rewarded with an estate in the meanwhile otoyo seeing that her nightly visits bore no fruits kept away and from that time forth the night guard were no longer subject to fits of drowsiness this coincidence struck soda as very strange so he went to isahaya butsen and told him that of a certainty this otoyo was no other than a goblin isahaya butsen reflected for a while and said well then how shall we kill the foul thing i will go to the creature's room as if nothing were the matter and try to kill her but in case she should try to escape i will beg you to order eight men to stop outside and lie in wait for her having agreed upon this plan soda went at nightfall to otoyo's apartment pretending to have been sent with a message from the prince when she saw him arrive she said what message have you brought me from my lord oh nothing in particular be so kind as to look at this letter and as he spoke he drew near to her and suddenly drawing his dirk cut at her but the goblin springing back seized a halberd and glaring fiercely at soda said how dare you behave like this to one of your lord's ladies i will have you dismissed and she tried to strike soda with the halberd but soda fought desperately with his dirk and the goblin seeing that she was no match for him threw away the halberd and from a beautiful woman became suddenly transformed into a cat which springing up the sides of the room jumped on to the roof isahaya butsen and his eight men who were watching outside shot at the cat but missed it and the beast made good its escape so the cat fled to the mountains and did much mischief among the surrounding people until at last the prince of heitzen ordered a great hunt and the beast was killed but the prince recovered from his sickness and ito soda was richly rewarded end of section thirty one